Can you guys see this? <laughs> So I just went out to buy a new camera lens and I'm saying this because I got this for today's video. So I try to reinvest what we earn on this channel back into the channel as much as possible. So you actually help with this and I just can't say it enough. Thank you for your support by watching. Now I hope to provide some value back with this lens as with this I'm able to take photos of the display that looks as representable as possible to what I actually see with my naked eye. <laughs> with my other lens, it is very hard to near impossible to do this. So today, I welcome you to a dive into VR episode where we dive into the Oculus Quest 2 display. I will answer some of your frequently asked questions like screen door effect, LCD versus OLED, and field of view. And I will explain all this with some actual proof as I will show you through the lens footage. This headset looks a bit strange without its straps, right? It's so naked. Anyways, in the future, I hope to make good use of this lens with other VR headsets too. So make sure to subscribe to see more of these kinds of videos. And we're almost at 60k for that elite upgrade in our Oculus Quest 2 giveaway. So don't forget to join, link is below. And hey again everyone, I'm Kaz and now join me beyond reality. Mm. So let's start with a little refresh of the Quest 2 display specs. Quest 2 has an RGB stripe fast rich LCD single panel and this is its resolution. It has 72Hz refresh rate out of the box and 90Hz support is coming later. Quest 1 has a Panto OLED uh, display dual panels and uh, this is its resolution. It also only has 72Hz refresh rate. As a reminder, since the Quest 2 does not have 90Hz mode activated yet, most things are also upscaled for now in resolution, so we need to take that into account as uh, this means in some areas, like in most games at launch, the difference may not be as big yet, but will look better after updates. More testing should be done though after that to get a final say on that. So the first question you all ask a lot is whether LCD is worse or better than the OLED screens. There are pros and cons. So here's the first through the lenses shot. By the way, Tyreel Wood is an absolute pro at these shots. He's a good friend and also an inspiration for these through the lens photos. So I'm going to put a link to his video below as well. Do check him out if you haven't yet already. Anyways, I hope you like having more videos on the subject to compare with. Definitely let me know in the comments below. So the first picture is that of the Oculus Quest 1, which has OLED screens. The second photo is that of the Oculus Quest 2, which has the LCD. It's important to know that I'm shooting this using a macro lens, so the image is a lot more magnified than what you can do with your eye. Plus the display and the lenses are made to look at with your human eye and not through a camera lens. So I did my best to make it as representable as possible, but it won't be exactly one on one. Most of the time it's a little bit sharper in the headset and the colors could be slightly off too in the pictures, but I do think the pictures turned out okay enough for a comparison video and I will explain what I see with my eye in the headset too while showing you these images to give you a, a clearer understanding. Anyways, let's start with the biggest difference between the LCD and OLED, the black levels. You can see the difference between the blacks the most when you start up the headset or a game where everything's uh, black and all that's displayed is the logo. So the Quest 1 OLED screen has deeper blacks while the Quest 2 LCD has blacks that look grayer. So in the headset you can see the difference better than on these pictures right now, but the difference is not big. I guess the reason for that is that the Quest 1 OLED screens do not have pure blacks. They can in theory, but as Oculus does some corrections to get rid of inconsistency on the displays, it winds up not getting pure blacks. John Carmack's latest keynote explains this during Facebook Connect, so I won't go into too much detail here, but I will link his talk below in the description. So the black levels difference is not that big, but still I can conclude that the Quest 1 has better black levels than the Quest 2. 
Another important difference is that the screens use different subpixel layouts. The LCD uses a full RGB stripe arrangement, while the Quest 1 uses OLED screens that has a pen tile arrangement. And what this means for us consumers is that the Quest 2 has more subpixels, so a better fill factor, and that significantly reduces screen door effect. The screen door effect is the black space between pixels, which you can sometimes see if you look at a display very closely, which is what you are doing when you are wearing a VR headset. This effect bothers some people more than others, but it was mostly obvious in older headsets like the original Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive. This was already improved on the Quest 1, but still it was noticeable. However, on the Quest 2, it's almost not visible for the naked eye anymore, so basically gone. But now you may be like, but Cass, why do I still see it in these pictures? Well, you're asking some good questions here. You can see the screen door effect still in these uh, through the lens photos because of my macro lens that does some magical magnifications. However, I can assure you with a normal human eye, it will be hard to see. So no worries about those ugly lines, which is especially lovely when watching movies. So let's talk about the color differences for a bit. So far the difference here is that I find the LCD better in color contrast. It looks a little more realistic while the colors in the Quest 1 look a bit oversaturated and more yellowish. You can see that from these pictures in the space station home environment. The Quest 1 has a slight yellow tint on the white. So even though the black levels are deeper on Quest 1, I still prefer the colors on the Quest 2. I don't think this is a matter of preference though, but keep in mind that Quest 2 also just looks better because of the higher resolution, which is something the Quest 1, I want to say 2, can't beat. There is another difference, which is the display latency. The latency is actually a little bit worse on the Quest 2's LCD screen, but we're only talking about a few milliseconds here, so it's not that noticeable, maybe only when you start looking for it, but it does seem to have some noticeable effect. Like look at these through the lens videos. When I move the headset around in front of the lens, you can see some glare around the text, right? That also happens when I'm inside the headset myself and just start looking around with my head. So on the Quest 1, this doesn't happen. I'm not sure if this is because of the latency or maybe a chromatic operation or maybe it's the new IPD adjustment, but it's a little distracting. However, John Carmack did say in his talks that once 90Hz support is here, this latency will not matter anymore, so maybe that's good news. Let's hope that it comes fast though, because I think some people might not like it. By the way, this glare happens mostly in high contrast scenes like reading white text on a black background and it's not that glare where it's because of the lenses. But when playing games, it's not really noticeable and it doesn't bother me at all, but I just wanted to mention it for those that may see it when they get the headset. Okay, last but not least, before we move on to my conclusion, I wanted to touch base on the view to view uh, as well as many of you are curious about that. I've tested the field of view using a VR headset tester tool from Infinite, where you can see two lines left and right, and by moving them until they are almost out of the screen, you can uh, measure your FOV. So I tested both headsets with the tool, I tried Quest 1 with the original strap and face foam, and I tested the Quest 2 with the Elite strap and original face foam. And these are the results, so I can keep my previous conclusions here. The Oculus Quest 2 has a bit lower FOV than the Quest 1. I'm using the IPD setting of one though, so that's the setting where the lenses are the closest to each other. If you move the lenses to setting 2 or 3, your FOV will actually be smaller, so that's a little unfortunate. Then there is another drawback for those on IPD setting 3, so that's 68mm and above, you also see the black edges of the display at the sides, since it's a single panel now, so the panel doesn't move with the IPD setting anymore. So my conclusion, some compromises, but overall the new Quest 2 display is still impressive to me. Some things are strange like the glaring problem, but 
those could be fixed when the 90 hertz mode is out. And in games like Red Matter, where high resolution assets has already been added, good job devs, there the difference is a lot more significant. The black levels are a matter of preference. Still, for me, the LCD gray and blacks combined with the more realistic colors and high resolution, it just makes for a beautiful, crisp display. One where you can immediately tell that it's improved over Quest 1. Especially having near to no screen door effect is very nice for watching movies and just gaming in general. But the biggest drawback is the view to view and this IPD adjustment. The view to view is smaller for people with IPD values over the second setting. So if you're over 64 to 66 and if you're in between values, you might see even more of that glaring issue. I think that's the most significant compromise in this display of this headset. But let me know what you think of the display now, now you've uh, seen this video and if you got any more questions, put them below in the comments and I'll try to answer as many of them in upcoming videos. And I hope you enjoyed my mini review of the display. I also need your feedback. Let me know if there is anything you would like to see improved from these through the lenses photos as it is my first time. So uh, there is probably a lot to improve and uh, I will do my best next time. Also, some of you think I sound Sound like a grandma thanks for that i guess i'm uh, exposed but i still love you all so if you want to support us further check out more videos on our channel as well and uh, well see you in the next stay safe and a special thanks goes to all our champions especially those patrons down below right now and as always vr on